we were putting this together so that we could figure out dimensions for paint. And since I now have the petticoat and the split drawers finished, split drawers, shift, uh, hoop, petticoat, underskirt. Layers! I now officially feel like a cake. I like it. Now let's paint it. In order to get the kind of detail we wanted, I was going to have to make some stencils because we're not freehanding this. First thing I ended up doing was scour the internet to try and get some decent high-res pictures of this Barbie because it's a limited edition and you can't find it anywhere, and then bringing that here into Illustrator. Basically using the pen tool to just trace around all the shapes because this is going to go on the Cricut anyway. I don't need too great fidelity in the final shapes because they just need to be large enough to translate into a ping, put in the Cricut, and just plunk and cut it out. The bodice piece here, I only really need to do half because you're looking at symmetry and just it's easier to mirror and flip it over. But of course, when you have pieces like this, it makes your life a little frustrating and to try a few different ways until you realize, well, as long as the center shape is fine, it'll work. So here we invert the shape and hey, look, it looks okay. Compared to the original bodice piece, looks workable. Set it off the side and we continue. Moving on to the sleeve, I found this one artist, uh, The Art of Claude on DeviantArt, who does some wonderful repaints, but most importantly for me, had a nice high-res picture of the sleeves here. Well, give me a lot better detail to work with and try and figure out what I was doing. Everything seems all fine and hunky door, just going around and getting the gross outline of the shapes until we get towards the back and realize oh yeah this continues and wraps all the way around and I can't really see the edge of that it's right around here comparing to the original oh yeah there's extra space there's extra detail and then have to extend that little curve there, make it all blend and arc nicely so it fits in. So that's what we have. We take that and you mirror it. And that's what your sleeve piece is going to look like. Except we didn't use it for the sleeves because the shape of the sleeve is different. Anyway, moving on to the skirts. Could only really get good enough detail on the front hem piece, or not the front hem, on the front the front skirt panel. So once again dealing with the perspective issue and not having good enough source images of the rest of the hem on the side and the back, we decided, you know what, we're going to use this same piece for the hem too. It's fine, it works, and I think You'll see in the finished product, it looks pretty all right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not at all dissatisfied with it. I don't know. Also speaking with Illustrator, I taught myself the program through books and accompanying CD videos years ago. I am entirely self-taught and have refined what I can find with online. So. Keep that in mind before you <laughs> come at me in the comments, please. I know I'm, I'm, I'm adequate with Illustrator. I can get what I need to do done. I know there's a lot more I still could stand to learn. But for the purpose of doing stencils for cosplay, because I'm not about to try and print or try and paint gigantic arcing loops of gold by freehand. No, thank you. So, we move on, finish the skirt piece, and then we cut.
cut looks pretty good. Seems to have gotten all the detail we need for this. This is at least the bodice piece because it will fit on the board we have. The sleeves and the skirt are two and a half feet a piece. So I'm gonna have to print that a different way and we'll have to cut that by hand. Good little cricket. Good job. So as I was sorting through my stash of fabric to find things to test paint on, um, I was sorting through stuff and I thought I would uh, hop on and give you a pro tip for anyone who's crafting who's local. So I'm trying to sort my uh, cabbage patch into a couple of piles. Um, this bag here is scraps that are either so strangely cut or so small that really the only thing that can be done with them is they can be sliced up and made into stuffing to put in uh, a, a bustle pad. And that is a future project that is coming. And then this stack is stuff, scraps that I can use to make masks or bows. Uh, I will put fabric that has enough that I can actually make a mock-up or do something else with in there. Um, and then this bag is what I wanted to share with you. This bag is going to be donated to our local children's museum. They have a whole section set up for budding young fashion designers where they have sewing and uh, little figurines that they can uh, cut out and design clothes for and they have been of fabric scraps so like little pieces that they can cut out and turn into clothes and so I just pulled anything that I thought would be fun like some tool and here's some green tool and there's some like berries and pieces that are big enough to where you can cut them out to make paper doll size clothes but not big enough for me to do anything else with uh, so they won't go to waste. They'll be used in the creative process to help inspire future makers, which I'm really excited about, and it's not going in a landfill. And, you know, I feel like I'm doing some good and paying it forward for, for some, some young creatives and cosplayers to express themselves in a safe environment in a children's museum. So that's uh, what I'm doing with that bag. They do take donations. I don't know what the procedure is. I just know the last time I was there, I saw the bin and I was like, oh, do you take donations? And the dude who was working there looked very confused and was like, yes. So my plan is next time I go, I will bring my bag of fabric to donate and just be like, make more makers, please. Thank you. If you make other things, they also have, like, a section where they have wood and power tools and, like, your offcuts of your wood can be used for them to, like, make race cars and stuff. So there's there's other stuff that I'm sure they would be more than happy to take donations of, but my contribution will be fabric scraps. It is almost fabric painting time, so I am running some tests. Let me show you what we got. So here's my scrap fabric. And these three tests are with the fabric medium. And what has happened is the fabric medium has made the paint so thin that it's just like running through, especially on the velvet. It's really bad on the velvet. It's not great on the skirt. Um, and then this is just the paint. And the other test that I'm running is over here this is with the fabric medium, this is without the fabric medium, and this is a test piece that I had sewn together trying to get the curved seam and the velvet and the lining to play nice. Um, you can see like this one is not as dense, and this one is more dense, um, and I'm testing bleed through. Um, so that is 
where we are. The one nice thing is it looks like the paint on its own works just fine on the velvet and the velvet bodice is not going to get washed for any reason because velvet so yeah this can work the overskirt it looks like just the acrylic paint would be better because the fabric medium makes it looser but we'll see what it looks like after it dries and we'll check in tomorrow all right so i wanted to check in about the paint um we've done our tests medium and you can see that they're not really super vibrant and this one didn't and the difference here is that the fabric medium is is lessening the vibrance of the paint color and it th they're all bleeding through the other side but it's lessening the vibrance of the paint which I don't like and Part of the point of the fabric medium is it's supposed to make the fabric more washable. But I don't intend on washing this a whole lot anyway. If anything, I intend on spot treating it. Uh, so that didn't... I think we're going to go with just the straight acrylic on the skirt. And Zach finished cutting out the stencils yesterday. Um, so he's going to trace the stencils onto the skirt, the overskirt. Um, we are still trying to figure out what we're doing with the bodice because the bodice, as you can see, or not see, which is kind of the point, the paint didn't really stick because of the pile of the velvet. Like you can see it up close, doo doo doo, but far away, you can't see it at all. So I am experimenting with puff paint. And by the way, one of these is with fabric medium and one of them is without. I think the big one is with fabric medium. <sighs> Excuse me. And then this one is without. But again, you can't really see them. They bled through. This one bled through a lot. You can see it like a lot on the back side, which is not helpful at all. And even on the lined, like you can't really see. It didn't bleed through onto the lining, but it's, you know, you can see it there. So we're experimenting with puff paint, but the puff paint is not dry. So Zach is going to trace the designs onto the skirt. <coughs> we are probably going to have to put the bodice on Daisy to paint Daisy. And we'll just like draw it out, like trace out the designs in puff paint if this works. Because I'm going to wait for the puff paint to dry and then paint over the puff paint with acrylic paint to see what that does because we have this whole thing of white, which should be just fine. So we're gonna see what happens and we'll do some painting tomorrow. And hopefully we figure out a way to paint some velvet. Cause the, the alternative of a way to make this work is to hand embroider the bodice. And that just, sounds awful would I do it for Anna or you know something that wasn't inspired by a Barbie probably am I gonna do it for this preferably not I won't have time to do it for this because I like this was supposed to be done on Christmas and it's almost June so no <laughs> We're not doing it that way. But I will see you tomorrow for some painting and the results of this puff paint test. Because again, once this is dry, we're gonna hit it with some paint and see what happens. Happy Wednesday. Zach fell asleep on the couch last night and didn't get any of the uh, skirt pieces traced, so I am working on that right now. And uh, I just discovered after 
texting him, oh no, they don't fit, that he's a genius and he made a puzzle notch where these pieces are supposed to fit together and I'm going to show you. Uh, they do fit. I just am bad at spatial reasoning. So here we are. So this part right here, there's a notch here where these go together. And now it fits. I'm going to go trace this out and try to label the pieces with what color they get painted. And I'm going to try to get the skirt all traced out so that after Emma goes to bed, I can paint it and do some tests on the bodice. The puff paint is dry now, but I don't want to have to get out paint and paint brushes to do the test on that unless I'm already, you know, painting. So this it is. So I didn't film what I was doing when I was tracing the uh, stencils onto the skirt because I'm not even really sure if this is going to show up on camera because it's blue fabric and I used a black friction pen. But I'm going to see if I can show you what, what I ended up with. Okay, you can kind of see that. It's kind of picking up. But you can see how I traced the stencil on here. And this is the one that I thought didn't fit, but it does. And then I just used the other, the, the top part of the skirt stencil and the sleeve stencil to invent a pattern for the back of the skirt. Uh, and now I'm going to go through and try to figure out what needs to be what color for painting. Camera battery's dying. I am going to go pick up Tiny Human. This is just going to take a really long time, but uh, at least this is started and it can dry a little bit before I move on to the next part. Alright, excuse the chattering. I'm supposed to be sleeping. This is what it looks like on the velvet, the paint. Uh, by itself. You can see it's not great. This is what it looks like on the puppy. And that's the blue. You can kind of tell that it's blue. It's very washed out because, you know, dark blue velvet. But yeah, you can see it's it's much better. It's much more clearly defined. It's less fuzzy. It looks more intentional. It looks less like, like that kind of looks like a stain, whereas that clearly looks like it's supposed to be. I didn't paint the whole shape, but you know, you get the point. You get the idea. Uh, and this has had a chance to dry. It looks pretty good. And we will just carry on from here. All right, we are back at it, and I wanted to show you where we stand. Zach has taken over painting the skirt and I'm tackling the bodice. So we're hitting it with the puff paint and the stencil situation. I've got the stencil now pinned to a bunch of fabric and, and the bodice to try to get a layer on and then we'll wait for that layer to dry and then go over it with the puff paint without the stencil because the velvet is dumb. And that's what we're doing. I am putting some puff paint in the stencil and then spreading it out with 
spreading it out with this because the pile on the velvet moves. It's a pain in the eye. Patukas. I'm going to try to get one coat on before bed tonight so that I can do the other coat tomorrow and maybe be able to paint it and get some photos this weekend. Maybe. Alright, so it's not the cleanest job. But it's not terrible. I think it'll do. Given, you know, this is velvet. We'll make it work. Alright, so the puff painting is done on the bodice. It does suck. It's ready to be painted. Fortunately, all of that is being painted gold. So I can just go at that when it's dry with some gold paint and it'll be fine. And then I'm going to glue two gemstones on either side here. And I'm trying to not put my finger in puff paint. Um, and then the only thing left is that. Zach finished the one side of the front panel and he's about to start work on the other, it appears. <laughs> I've been repeatedly thanking him for indulging my insanity. Uh, but yeah, so that's where we are with this. Uh, if he remembers, maybe he'll check in this evening. And if not, then I will see you tomorrow. What's up? It is Thursday and I am back at this painting situation uh, and it occurred to me that I should probably check in and show you what's happening. So, here we go. I'm working on the bodice right now and you can see that the puff paint dried and then this is where I've put the regular paint over the top of it. I'm actually like, it's worked better than I thought it was going to. Uh, yeah, we'll see how this dries. But what it's preventing, I think, is it's preventing the paint from just seeping through the velvet and onto like whatever's underneath it, which is a bunch of scrap fabric right now in the lining. But it looks like it's picking up okay on camera. In person, like I just painted this one and I don't know if you can tell, but it's shinier than this one or that one. So I think it's going to need another layer of paint. You can see where like the puff paint had bubbles in it. But I think from far away, you're not going to notice as much. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to do a coat and then go pick up Emma while I wait for this to dry. I'm going to go pick her up in like 45 minutes. Uh, so if I finish the first coat on this, I will move over to the skirt and do some of the gold that's left on the skirt. Uh, one side is completely done, the other side is almost done with the gold, and then it's just the blue. Um, and then some of the blue needs some touch-up coats. And we gotta do the back of the skirt. And then glue on the gems, and then we are done with the painting? Question mark? God, I hope we'll be done soon. It's the end of the night, and here's where we are. Bodice is done, minus the two gems that I'm going to glue on there on either side. Skirt, side panels are both done, and the painting along the hem has begun. Hooray! Alright, it is Saturday night, and this is the progress that we've made. We've got this section of the bodice or of the bottom painted, and then I've started that side of this from here over. That whole half of the skirt is done, so it's just this section left to do. But this has to dry all the blue bits there. And all the blue bits here, just got a second coat, so they all have to dry so that I can move this and get to that. Uh, we only have a little bit left, guys. Uh, so close. Exciting Friday nights. You know what? 
It's us. <laughs> this is about as exciting as we get as humans. Also, this is a lot of painting. Yeah. I should measure the circumference of this hem and see how much we had to paint. <laughs> but not yet. It's still wet. And I'm not done. The painting is finally done. I finished it this morning. Emma woke up while I was finishing up the last little bit of paint, but uh, it's done now. Let me show you. Alright, so there's the paint down the front. And then... Oh, come on. It's all the way around the hem, to the back, and then all the way around the other side. So that is done, and the bodice painting is done. So now I glue gems on. I'm going to figure out what glue I need. She is a very glamorous mermaid. We have decided to go with hot glue to attach the uh, little... So we've got. Let me see. Rhinestone things that have the flat backs. And I'm using some of the round ones, but I also have... Like, there are some little ones on here, and so for for those little ones, in the interest of saving the round ones, I'm using heart-shaped ones, because there's like one up top here and one on top on the other side. And so we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna do the ones down the front panel on both sides, and I'm gonna do the two that go on the bodice, and then I will distribute the ones on the back as I see fit, because I don't think I have enough to do all of them the way the original design was. Well, we're, we're ad-libbing the hem, so... We are ad-libbing the hem. We're winging it. Um, I also have these sew-on ones, but I don't think they look right. I, I feel like this is, like, adding in a different shade of blue. It doesn't fit. It, it doesn't fit. They're, they're distinctly jasmine gems, so I thought they might work. They don't. I also have these purple ones. They definitely don't work, but I don't even remember where these came from, so... Anyway, here's the gems. Look at all the sparklies. There they go, all the way down. And all the way up. Ha 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 ha, sparkles. Gemstones are glued on, as you can see. She is sparkly, and they're all around the hem as well. Oh. Maybe, yeah, they're all around the hem, and that's it. We're done. Next, well, no, we're not done. I'm gonna make a real quick bow, but we're done for the purposes of this video, and the next time you will see this in the Get Ready With Me reveal video. I feel like Frodo at the end of the Lord of the Rings movies. It's done! <sighs> so if you want to see what this uh, 2020 holiday aerial Barbie looks like on and all put together as a complete finished ensemble, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when we post our reveal video. Uh, that should be coming uh, shortly. And uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what is the longest you spent on a project by surprise. I thought I was going to get finished worn photos of this on Christmas Day. It's June 5th. So, what's the longest you spent on a project? Have a great week, and I will see you in the reveal video. Bye, guys.